and the decision won't be made for who the heir apparent will be at least at Alabama for now replacing the Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young the number one overall pick he's going to be starting for the Carolina Panthers there's a trio of players that Alabama could start a quarterback Nick Saban did not release his depth chart yesterday so we're left to wait and find out however CJ Stroud we know he's going to be starting for the Houston Texans in just moments ago Ryan Day let us know who's starting for the Buckeyes this new on Sports Center. In the end of the game, uh, Kyle McCord will be the starter. Um, and uh, Devin Brown is going to play in the game. Uh, I think that Kyle has done a great job over the last two weeks of, of showing consistency. Um, he's played very well in practice. Uh, but, but Devin also, throughout the body of the preseason, has shown that he deserves to play. So um, expect both of them to play. Uh, we have confidence in both of them. Um, I think that's you know, significant that we, that we have two guys that we feel confident playing in a game. This is something that's a little uncharted territory for me, but um, you just go on what you see every day in practice. And um, I think that Kyle's consistency the last couple of weeks has allowed him to be the starter. He deserves that. But I also think uh, Devin deserves to play in the game as well. So um, how much all that, that's still to be determined, but, but we've at least come up with that uh, conclusion here. The buzzword coming out of Ryan Day's press conference, consistency as it relates to Kyle McCord, who more consistent than our own Greg McElroy. Uh, Greg, break down your thoughts on Ohio State starting Kyle McCord against Indiana. I think they went really with the bird in the hand as opposed to the bird in the bush. And this is not a competition that is totally settled. As if you listen closely to Ryan Day, he basically said for the Indiana game, specifically this game, Kyle McCord will get the first crack at it. It's probably appropriate too, knowing that he's the veteran presence and has support within the locker room, but do not rule out the possibility of this quarterback competition dragging into week two and maybe even into week three. I think about how Michigan handled the position last year. Cade McNamara started week one, JJ McCarthy week two, and then it was JJ's show from that point forward. Ole Miss did something similar with Luke Altmaier and Jackson Dart. They rotated Altmaier one, then Jackson Dart. Dart was the man in week three. So do not at this point rule out the possibility of Devin Brown getting an extended look against Youngstown State in week two, and then maybe deciding who their long-term solution is going to be beyond that point. Yeah, they're going to have to decide, come meet their Big Ten schedule, and whoever ends up being the everyday starter for Ohio State inherits perhaps the best skill position players of any team in the country. All right, McElroy, you speak fluent Nick Saban. Uh, Saban did not release a jet start for the first time in his 17 years in Alabama yesterday. What does that mean? A lot of people are reading into this, uh, assuming that there's some type of issue. Is Are they really uncertain with certain positions? Uh, I didn't read into it too much, especially knowing who they play week two. Uh, that being the Texas Longhorns, and the fact last year, Middle Tennessee, that's who they have this week, they did give Miami a run. And knowing, too, at the quarterback position specifically, the offense could be altered significantly by who the starting quarterback is. Jalen Milrow's skill set is extremely different from that of Ty Simpson, which is very different from that of Tyler Buckner. So you would offer a competitive advantage to the opposing team by announcing a depth chart that is set in stone. I think this is a fluid situation in a perfect world. They get a big lead on Saturday and they evaluate all three of their options at the quarterback spot. As of right now, I would be very surprised if Jalen Milrow isn't the starter on Saturday against Middle Tennessee. And I would imagine that they'll probably give him a nice long extended look because he does have experience and he's one support amongst many of the veterans within the locker room. But that decision, that's a big decision going into week two because you could argue Alabama, Texas, much like LSU, Florida State, is one of those games that could shape the rest of the season with the college football playoff. Like I said, McElroy, cliche and consistent here on SportsCenter. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.